We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon Oh yeah! The red record light is red, which means we're recording another exciting edition of the Shock Marathons podcast. I'm Matt Farley here with Ava Scalzo. Hi. Charlie Roxburg. Greetings. And Tom Scalzo. Hello. We're here to discuss The Mutilator, a horror movie from 1985. Am I right? Four. Mm. Yeah. 84. Close. Close. <laughs> it, says 80, it says 83 on the credits. Ah, it keeps getting older. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we start off and we see the exterior of a suburban house. And then we see a woman preparing a birthday cake. Then Buddy we, Cooper's mom, I think. Ah, the, the mom of the director. Of the, so. yeah, the auteur, we should say. Then we see a boy cleaning guns as a present for his dad's birthday. We know this because of the sign that he put on the gun rack that says, Happy Birthday, Daddy, all cleaned by me. But things go wrong when he shoots several times through the wall, killing his mom just as his dad walks in. Without speaking a word, Dad assesses the scene, slaps his son, and drags his wife into another room. He enjoys a sip of liquor while uh, looking at the birthday note by the gun rack. His dead wife right there under him, he um, he awaits the police. Whew. Heavy stuff, huh, Charlie? Didn't like it. <laughs> Love this movie. Didn't like it, though. You don't need to see something so real like an accident. Usually, especially an accident that's not something like um, mean-spirited or something. Like in Prom Night, you get someone's being tormented. They deserve or in it. Or Va- right. uh, Denise Richards film uh, Valentine, right? <laughs> Someone's yeah. being tormented, and then yeah, that this just makes you thing. feel Here, bad. it's like, yeah. yeah, it's a household accident. You feel bad, and uh, you know, I, I don't really like it that much. And and what if you didn't even have that? What if it was just a slasher at the house? It doesn't have to be. You don't get a lot out of the fact that it's. Um, no, I mean, uh, I guess it's motivation for why his dad is uh, luring. But him. a slow burning motivation, right? <laughs> yeah, As a slow dinner. burn. So, I mean, it's understandable because the guy falls asleep even mid, um, you know, midway through killing all these people. He takes it's naps true. under the floor. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a dish best served cold, like twenty years later. <laughs> Barely. Like, no, away. not yet. Not yet. <laughs> all right. Let's cut. You know, one last right. question. I'm so sorry, no, Farley. Please. How crazy was the dad before then? Because <laughs> it almost seems like maybe he was a little unhinged. Even well, first off, he doesn't keep his weapons locked, and and or, and he keeps them unloaded. loaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. keeps them loaded. He he also just looked crazy to me. I don't know. Maybe just because he's a hunter. And just no, an idea. He, he definitely looks like. Because when he walks in, like, granted, I guess, Max, what's his name? What's Ed. 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 I, I, I keep thinking his name is Max because of the writing on the note where he says, by me, for whatever reason, my head just is like, it's a, it should be a signature, and I've assigned the name Max to him. Uh, <laughs> so I have a really hard time thinking of this guy as Ed. But anyway, uh, so he... Like, I know he, Ed, just shot his mother, so obviously that's very traumatic. But what's very bizarre about that scene is, like, no one cries, you know? Like, like you would think that if this horrific, you know, like, the the, everything is, it's all very quiet. Like, he looks at his mother, and then the dad walks in, and then quietly, like, he doesn't say anything. He just, like, lifts him and slaps him, and then he drags her. It's just, it's really weird, because... Like it's it's this very real like a, a like domestic a horrible accident, and yet the the reaction to it is so it's it's very surreal because like because they don't use any words or anything yeah. after that scene. That's true. Yeah. There were issues at this home long before the 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 death of the yeah. mom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good call. 
think so. And I don't. Yeah, I hope they never make a prequel because I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> all right, now cut to thoughtful college student Ed around the table with friends, drinking beers, and let's just listen to them talking. Fall break, and here we sit. No plans, nothing to do. I've been warning you since September. Go to the beach, go to the mountains, do something. Don't say I didn't tell you so. Well, why don't you make some reservations? I should have, but you guys never agree on anything. So we'll sit around here just like we did last year. It's depressing. All right. So we established... So good. We established fall break, which, um, I mean, you know, Tom, let's hear it. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll pepper the interview or our, our recap here with some tidbits I picked up from the uh, special features. But they do talk about in North Carolina, fall break is a, is a thing. And it's not oh. widely known outside of that area. So when they first titled it fall break, it, they kind of assumed everybody knew what it meant. Yeah, it's like um, if we call the movie like the bubbler, refer you know how they call water fountains bubblers around here. Uh, yeah, like, I have a crazy fact too. Yeah, let's good one it. though. The guy who plays Ed, he was in hit the next movie he was in after the Mutilator or Fall Break was Spring Break. Oh wow! <laughs> back That's to back films fall break and spring break the only <laughs> actor in the history of the world to do two <laughs> break related films back to back that's impressive so, so okay then ralph ralph who's she's been burning him since september that's already fall <laughs> I, it's, yeah, like, it's like they, last they just, week yeah they just went to school and they're like where are we going on our break anyway sorry. <laughs> 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 all right so ralph ralph's a real jokester and he tells Ed he has a phone call. Ed doesn't believe him at first, but then he takes the call. Um, the students dwell more on their predicament as Ed continues with the call. Turns out it's Ed's dad on the phone. He wants Ed to shut down the condo, the beach condo, for the winter. Ed refuses. Ed, um, Ed is the boy from the beginning of the movie, by the way, just so everybody knows. Um, he's grown up, and uh, he still has some relationship with his dad. Uh, so the friends pass around a note, which probably says something about how they should all go to the condo. After they all read the note, they um, they kind of nod to each other like, all right, let's propose it to Ed. And he declares, I got a bad feeling about this. Tom? I'm sorry. The, the note is just a list of tasks that Ed needs to complete at the condo. Oh, it is? And, and they're, yes. they're just looking at it, and they're saying, oh, these aren't too hard. And uh -huh. then they all start getting the same idea, like, we could go do this stuff. All right, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. How much do you guys buy the dad's ability to even make this phone call? Maybe <laughs> one to even make a phone call, two to track down calling the bar. And yeah, because when I we know. see him for the first time, he's he's like a uh, he, he can barely. He don't think he can even speak. He's like he a just, mole person. He's like a yeah, perfect. Anyway, yes, he's like he's like this weird mole person. And I don't picture his just like, oh, can you give me the number of the local tavern in this uh, university? Yeah. And just, but it's funny. It's great. And uh, that's one of the reasons, things we love about movies like this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we should say that this is the plan, as far as we can tell, of Ed's dad to get back at him for, for inadvertently shooting, you know, Ed in, inadvertently shooting his mom so many years ago. And now's the time. He's waited till fall break to to lure to lure his son to the condo and kill him there. That okay? That, I, like there's I guess. no no further commentary necessary because it just it's so ridiculous. All right, so he says I got a bad feeling about this, and then he groans. But uh, it is written they're going to the condo for the beach for fall break. Uh, before oh how about this before leaving. Rel like so they're all in the car, and then Ralph comes <laughs> out and says, "Sue can't go. She had some issue with her her exam, and she's got to <laughs> take it again." But then Sue comes out, and it's revealed that Ralph was just being a joker again. Oh, oh, oh pranks, pranks, pranks. Oh, it's so That's bad. the least funny joke, fiction or <laughs> or nonfiction in in the universe history. Oh. It's not. It's not even a joke. It's just, <laughs> it's just a, a, a very lie. believable lie. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's like a misdirection. It doesn't pay off. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So weird. Ralph says... It's funny because, like, movies like this always, you know, especially when it's, like, young group of kids, there's always this one guy who is the prankster. Yeah. Or... uh, I should say, allegedly, yes. the prankster, because they are <laughs> never funny. Like they're, they're supposed to provide comic relief. It's but so they don't. lame. It's always yeah. incredibly lame. Just like the movie we did before. You know, like when he threw the the spider on the on the on, uh, on the egg. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. But they were Ralph, his eggs. Ralph would have done that though. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he would have. Total Ralph move. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so Ralph. <laughs> So then Ralph says, um, <laughs> let's get this road trip on the road, which is a great oh, line. Oh, yeah. And then the best part of the movie happens at the 10-minute oh and four-second uh, spot. Ladies and gentlemen, just sit back and listen to the best part of this movie. We'll pack the car with escape in mind Forget out classes, leaving books behind Time to get away Empty cottage sitting on the shore Taurus all left about a month before And we're gonna have a good time Gonna have a good time Yeah, we're gonna have a good time We're going on now A ball break, ball break. walking in and head Sweet soul there, I swear we'll never bar. We're going on a ball break. Oh, I just I just want to keep listening to it on repeat. Oh, Charlie, tell us about fall uh, break. You know, people often when they talk about the marriage of sight and sound, they they might talk about like apocalypse now with the <laughs> uh, Wagner blasting and just the helicopters and but with this, the kids jumping in the convertible. That song kicking in, the hijinks on the road trip, the credits rolling, it is just cloud nine. If you are renting this or watched it with a group of friends, it is unbelievably awesome. The tone is not what you expected. It's like a sitcom. (laughs) So you're thrown off, (laughs) but you're happy as heck. It is just amazing. It's shocking. You know, and so much work went into it. It it overshadows the entire movie (laughs) to this day. (laughs) To this day. It does. It is. Well, and you. you, Go to. Sorry, but. I just. I don't know if you noticed during the bar scene, there was like the uh, an instrumental uh, uh, hint of it. Did you hear that in Uh, the in the bar scene? Yeah, totally. It's everywhere. (laughs) I love it. I love it. The way it's spiced in there like that, that that is really not done often. And that it was like before we got to the real fall break, we got this subtle, more subtle version that was just kind of planting the seed. And it's so good. It ah. is such a great song. Oh, my goodness. It's, they released it's, an LP of it. I mean, uh, a, a single of it on vinyl. Has anyone yep. c- got a copy of that? We Someone's got to track that down. I do. It's too expensive. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um. And uh, what's the name of the band? Is it uh, Buddy Cooper or what is it? Well, what's Buddy the... Cooper is actually part of the Breakers. He's part of the Breakers, yeah. So that's, that's the name of the pre- band? It's called the Breakers? The Fall Breakers. The Fall Breakers. Breakers. Okay. And that's their only song? The composer is the main guy in the band, I think. And that's not Buddy? Yeah. It's someone else? No. Uh, it's uh, Michael Minard. Well, he is a songwriting a savant, that guy. Uh, but. He, he wrote it with with someone. He wrote it. He co-wrote it. I think with the guy who wrote "Under the Boardwalk" or something like that. Because oh. that's what, yeah, that's what Buddy Cooper wanted. He wanted like a song like that. So what did he do? He oh. was like, "Go get the guy who co-wrote "Under the Boardwalk." Go get him. I think I just watched <laughs> this a few hours ago and I forgot already. But I think that's what he said. That that was that was how it came about. Uh, that's awesome. That he, that's the kind of sound he wanted. So. Well, he got it all worked out. Ava, do you love this song? I do. So um, this is one of the movies from your shock marathons that I've actually seen multiple times. Yeah. Um, and although, although this time is the first time I've actually, while watching, was like thinking critically about it instead of simply just like sitting back and enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and the song has always stuck with me. Um, it's it's one that 
I think it's comparable to animals are clumsy too. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. a great High call. praise. Great call. <laughs> Charlie. There, you know, when you just said watching multiple times, Ava, I, I think too, this, this, there's a lot of like foreshadowing and little hints that you can enjoy watching it the second time. For example, here, when they're getting ready to go on the fall break, and uh, he tries to start his big old like convertible Cadillac, and it doesn't start right away. It's more just like a comedy bit, like "Let's go!" And you, it's subtle, but it plays off. You know, they actually yeah. mm-hmm. establish something, and then it plays off. And then the nature in which some of the people get um, killed, you do find some foreshadowing there too. So there's a lot of there's a lot of hints, and it's pretty well thought out for multiple viewings. All right, so yeah, yeah. the song plays over a uh, montage of them on their way to the condo. Then we get a, a funny moment where the car is overheating. Oh, no. Ralph leaves his friends to deal with it. He goes in and negotiates with the clerk into giving him the senior discount so that he can get more um, more beer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Charlie. Just, just right. major props for the rural actors here. Oh, well, you don't let's get, listen to You him. don't get people like that in a normal Hollywood movie. Yeah. The best moment is after he leaves, then the two workers at the place discuss what just happened and it's so great <laughs> college kids talking oh, themselves into so... buying two six packs instead of one yep <laughs> i can hardly wait to head for the dunes and we're back down a blanket humming sweet love tunes from yesteryear not a soul inside girl heaven bless bring a radio a cooler and a case of the best and we'll disappear and later on, maybe, who knows, swim in the surf. And what happens at oh. this point, uh, yeah, it's so hard to shut that off. Uh, we see oh, the car is. pull over so one of the guys can urinate on the side of the road. Oh, and then the car drives off before he gets in. Oh, hilarious. Oh. oh. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> listen, to, they had to. listen to this line from Fall Break. When you fall into my arms, I'll break into your heart. Oh, that is gosh darn poetry. That is so good. <laughs> it is. I confirmed that yeah, it is co written by the guy who wrote Under the Boardwalk. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh. So That's good. The, the world is great. <laughs> Amen. Okay, they arrive at the condo. The door is already open. Uh, Ralph is nervous about it, but then they go in. Lots of empty bottles in the kitchen. Ed's dad must have been there with his drinking buddies. Dad used to say he'd hunted everything but man, Ed explains. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the girls wants to report it to the cops, but Ed explains it's not necessary since it was probably his dad. I just do not um, understand all this concern uh, amongst the, the, the other kids, Charlie. What are yeah, we it's a little, it's a little bit overexplained and talked up too much. Also, the place is a total dump. So, I yes. mean, being like something is missing. Like, who cares? There's a bunch of <laughs> trophies and <laughs> bottles all over the place. Like sheets just yeah. tossed over stuff. But my question to you guys is, do you think that the dad really did have his drinking buddies down there, and he ha- he does have friends and stuff? Yes, like this? I think he does. Yeah. Which... And the, when the sheriff says that later, that was true. Which takes away from the belief that he's like subhuman, and you know, like yeah, he he knows yeah. how to let loose with the, the the you know he's not he doesn't know how to act with his family, but I mean you know get him with his buddies, he's a good time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they find a picture of a guy that his dad r- rode over with a ski boat. It was just an accident. What? What yeah. is go? Okay. But it's in a frame. It's in a frame. Yeah. In a Wait, frame. did he kill this guy? Yes. This guy died. Am I right, um, Tom? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. so he kind of already did hunt man. You know, like we've immediately contradicted <laughs> that that statement. That is, I mean, they kind of gloss over it a little bit, but that is so weird, right? Yeah. So weird. And, you know, I, we, we'll see it come to this too, but his, his, if he did have a desire to hunt man, there's not a, there's a little bit of hunting that goes on, but not as, not so much as you would think from a hunter. Yeah. 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 I don't it's know. It's not like the most but, dangerous game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With like, you know, trapping them in a, in a, in a wood where there were, traps and things it's it's really just grabbing people but 
<laughs> okay, so the friends are pretty creeped out by all the all the weird knickknacks around the house. Um, the music um, sounds a lot like Jaws um, here, like almost mm. just like dun dun, just a little slower than Jaws. And we see that the mutilator is um, hiding under the floorboards or something. Um, and that is the dad, uh, you know, big reveal. That's I guess we're gonna find out later. Uh, or he's in the garage, which is right under the floor. What is what are the what's the it, geography? Oh, today? that's confusing. I don't know. I think you just basically have to think that he's spying on them somehow. I I, I was a little confused whether he was. There was a did they show a hole in the ground. It's like or? a back. It's like a, it's like a sub, like a crawl space behind the garage, like the garage. It seemed like. Yeah, like there's like a storage. It's like some storage. Or something. Yeah. yeah and, okay. It's kind of like so, a secret. So room. we watched the um, this time we watched the Blu-ray version. Um, and I have to say that I, I it was like the first time I actually could see some of these scenes <laughs> based on what I like what I could see in mm. the VHS tape. It really looked a lot more like a hole in the ground, but here in the on the Blu-ray, it was very clear that it was like within the in the garage there's like this extra room yeah. and they keep coming in and out of it later on in the movie so mm. it's um yeah like it's definitely like they you could you could actually see things <laughs> yeah it was much better yeah it's amazing what a difference like you know we we grew up watching these movies and like horrible uh, vhs it doesn't look good anyway and then it was like with put on to transferred to vhs with no amount of care or concern for quality so you know, a lot of our negative opinions uh, are influenced by that, and uh, it's a shame, huh, Charlie? Yeah, I, yeah, you're totally right. I, and it looks beautiful, this movie. It really does, especially watching this retransfer. It looks like a Canadian movie to me because it doesn't have the polish of a Hollywood movie, but it looks more like you know a pit style budget or something. That mm-hmm. professionalism, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I was just gonna say, I love when Sue is getting scared about stuff and she says um well they mentioned that the axe is mis- missing and she says well i'm a little bit uncomfortable it reminds <laughs> me of curse of the screaming dead girl says i like this hunting <laughs> business even less than i like the drinking i hear that girl's interpretation now all over the place <laughs> whenever anyone complains and then uh, did, are, awesome. you gonna get, are you gonna talk about the little throwing things farley that they're framed in the wall yeah, we're gonna get to. The, I think I'm gonna get to that. Um, but okay. I, well, I, if you don't come back to it, just quick, Lee. I, well, yeah. I, I didn't. I had trouble quite understanding what those things are. What are? Let's just do it now. What are those okay. things? Well, did you they're, guys hear that they call sinkers. them pyramid zingers? They're sinkers. Oh, pyramid, pyramid sinkers. sinkers. Okay, yeah. good. Because I searched pyramid zingers and absolutely zero came up. So is yeah. that something you're supposed to throw at someone, or is it just for fishing? Oh, it's it's for fishing. Okay, okay. So it was just for it's... fun. They were chucking them into the wall. Yeah, yeah. And then he did a good uh... job of it, and so he put a frame around it, right? He he won the contest, I guess, of trying to stick one in the wall. Okay. This okay. guy. I give him yeah. credit. Yeah. Okay. They just they just assume that it's almost he that guy is used to the fishing words, so he just. Uh, uses that word but for me i was like oh is that like some kind of chinese star what the heck is that okay so (laughs) let's think about the mutilator he he just wanted his son to come to the condo to clean presumably he wanted him to come to clean so he could kill him um that that's the but now he finds that his friends are there so he's just gonna have to kill the friends too that that's what's going on tom yeah, I mean that's what we have to assume because I don't know if you remember, but before that we he had some like fever dreams or something where he sees himself uh, attacking this the sun, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Okay. And, and like that was his dreams, but that uh-huh. that's what he has been dreaming about. Okay, so yeah, we yeah, have to assume yeah. he's he's finally you know decided to act on it. Yeah, we're that's actually the next scene. Yeah, so they unpack their things. We get a check in with the mutilator in his hiding spot. <laughs> uh, we we see a couple of the some of the couples are kissing. Um, we check back in with the mutilator, and like Tom mentioned, he's having the dream of him, um, of of when it happened. He dreams of how good it would have been to have shot his son or sliced his neck with an axe. That would have been great. That's we're, this is what we can only assume based on what we're watching. But uh, that seems to be what they're saying. 
Okay, so then Linda and Mike um, come into the garage joking about all the trophies the dad has. And he's out there. That's his hiding spot. He's watching them. Um, and then... Oh, so then Mike uses pliers to start removing um, Linda's jacket and shirt. Um, but then one of their friends interrupts them before they can continue. Um, then they have dinner. Everyone has dinner. Uh, Ed's girlfriend declares that she's established a duty roster. She and Ed are going to clean tonight. Another couple will clean tomorrow. That was a funny moment, huh, Charlie? Yeah, that those co- co- the other couples got lucky because e- even though yeah. they were all killed, they didn't have to do dishes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Linda and Mike go for a walk on the beach. The other couple stays inside by the fire. Out on the beach, the music switches um, oh, from nice. sweet romantic. It's that sweet romantic stuff, real good, but then it goes to scary, too, because the mutilator's watching. Right, Charlie? I think so. And isn't, th- isn't there a, an interpretation of Fall Break again? In romantic version? Oh, I did not know that. Instrumental Farley, yeah. And when oh, they're yeah. kicking up and frolicking in the surf. That's beautiful. It's everywhere. Oh, uh, it's so good. Uh, meanwhile, they paid for it. They had to use it. Yeah, their money's worth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, it's the guy who wrote Under the Board Under the Boardwalk, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, inside the others are playing Monopoly. Ralph has that look on his face that says he's up to no good because he is a prankster. Turns out uh he set up a prank, I guess. I don't even know if that comes to fruition. Um, oh. What happens there, Charlie? That's the thing that happens later, I guess. That oh, we don't yeah. see it oh, till. Okay. Oh, I was wondering how that, heck he, when he would have done that. He did that w- way early. So once again, oh, body. Oh, I know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That didn't pay that. off. Yeah. That's too long between set <laughs> up and pay off. <laughs> All right. So now the it's, it's such it's such bad planning because it, it literally it's it's how how much movie goes by before that actually pays <laughs> off. Like like I, 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 so much movie goes by that like when it actually happens, I remember thinking that's bizarre. But like, yeah, it just I didn't even happened. like connect it to what he had done before. Yeah. Well, yeah. Buddy that's did great. it for people who watch it four or five times. He's like, this is for the, the <laughs> diehards. If I hadn't been able to talk about it with you guys, I would have never put no. two and two together. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad we, we got that going on. That's good. All right. <laughs> the four of them decide to stop the game so they can go find Mike and Linda. Meanwhile, Mike and Linda find a pool that's um, full of chlorine. Why why did I write that down? Do they talk about the smell? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Can you guys do you guys know about this pool? Like the setup? Oh yeah, I've what is going on? Yeah, like what this. it's like so, it's under a tarp yeah. of some sort? What is going on there, Tom? Well in the in the making of stuff they talk about it a little bit and they apparently this was all shot within a very, very small area that's part of this um uh, motel that Buddy Cooper's father owned. And this this pool is is part of the hotel like compound and it's covered like it's like like a biodome or something and yeah. and that's the that's the the way the pool is but it, it it seems like they walked a pretty far way to get there but I guess it's it's all like right next to where they were before. Wow. So it's all but heated also, and there's like plants in there and yeah it's all mm-hmm. heated and and. So it's warm all year long, I guess. So, th- so you could really go here for fall break. <laughs> oh my God, Oceana is that is that it? There's a, uh, I saw yeah. there's a there's a place that's still open. I, I looked it up. Um, yeah, it's yeah. yeah it's still it's still uh, it's still part of the Cooper family. Oh, they still run it. it. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's let's listen. get this trip on the road. <laughs> so they go uh, they go skinny dipping in there. Uh, the guy says this is great. Right before he jumps in, let's listen to the music a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, huh? Wow. It's lovely. That's, that's it's really the fall break song. It's it's unbelievable. The lights go out in the pool, but then they go back on again. Mike and Linda play tag in the pool. As Linda floats on her back, the mutilator comes up from under her and pulls her down. Mike comes up from the water and is unable to find Linda, and the mutilator takes Linda out of the pool and then grabs Mike's clothes. Okay. 
Um, Mike finds his pants, I think, outside the pool. Thank God for small favors, he says as he puts them on. Charlie. What does that mean? <laughs> he just like, thankfully, thank, thanks for giving me at least something. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, he's like, well, at least I'm getting my, my pants. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it, it doesn't go over incredibly smoothly. But, uh, you know, in, it, what I was, one of my notes was in, in real life versus in movies, the amount of time that people splash each other in a pool. Yeah. If you're in a pool in a movie, well, number one, someone has to fall in usually if you're walking next to it. Yeah. But two, if there's a, you know, a couple, they are splashing each other. I, know. I don't care <laughs> if that very rarely would happen, or that you know someone just wouldn't want to get chlorine in their eyes like, or whatever. Stop. But, yeah, uh, you're like stop. Like why? Stop splashing me. Why are you doing this? <laughs> I don't even know why they got into this chlorine business. There was no, there was no reason. It doesn't. Okay, Tom. I, I have, a, I have a reason. <laughs> oh my god, so, this is great. So apparently. That when they were shooting it, they thought that the water was too clear to to be believable that, that they would see oh, the mutilator. God. So they filled the pool with milk, so that it would be really murky. But then they wanted to have an explanation why it was so murky. So oh. then they said it was extra chlorinated. Overthinking things. Oh, oh, oh I love it. I love it. I can't believe you had an answer for that one. Nice job. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. This is one of the best podcasts that we've done. So, okay. <laughs> so so then he keeps on finding more more of his clothes. He keep, follows the trail. They lead to the garage where um, her bra is on the ground. Now, this is getting interesting, Mike says. I think, <laughs> he is awesome. <laughs> I think I'm getting your message. <laughs> She, but they were both just naked, right? It's like, it's like, <laughs> now it's getting interesting. <laughs> well, what was that on skinny dip, yeah. M- Mike opens the door and is mutilated with some kind of uh, electric drill or saw or something. No, and, it's a oh. it's a prop. It's a it's an engine on oh, an outboard engine for a boat that's spinning. Well, right. It's, just like how he killed the the guy in his framed photo right. with prop. Ah, he has experience with that. Okay, all, all it's of a the, hobby. All the, it's supposed to be fishing related, marine related uh, implements of death. <laughs> <laughs> except, for, except for the battle axe. The battle axe. Yeah. <laughs> the the other four are still on the beach, uh, and then a patrol officer uh, shows up out of nowhere and asks what's going on. They explain that. Um, some of them think there were intruders in the house, but Ed thinks it was just his dad. The officer says he'll take note, but he will not make an official report unless he's called tomorrow. The patrolman uh, does some patrolling. Uh, it's kind of dull. And then he gets a... I, I called it a machete to the mouth, but was it actually a um, fishing uh, thing or no? Yeah, you have a machete on, on, on a fishing boat. All right. I'm, I don't fish, so I don't know. All right, so now, so he's dead. Um, the force, again, what is going, like, mutilator. You want to kill your son because of what he did uh, 20 years ago? Like, there's so many, like, this is so complicated. So complicated. <laughs> anyway, the foursome decide to return to the house. Uh, Ralph has a one-track mind. He just wants to score with his girl. Well, who's Ralph's girl? Sue. Uh, Sue. Sue. It's Ralph and Sue. Okay. And then it's Ed and... Pam. Pam. Okay. Ed jo- Ed's girl jokes with Ed about how she intends to remain pure. Um, when Ralph jokes about her- with her about this, she does a full wrestling move on him, getting him <laughs> down on the ground. That's intense. Huh? That- that's a fun moment. She's feisty. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to play Blind Man's Bluff. Um... Sue is the one who's hiding. She locks the door, uh, thinking that she's keeping Ralph out, but it turns out it's the mutilator on the other side. Um, now, he doesn't have a key to his own place. Is is that what we're to believe? It's Char- not on him. No, yeah, it just not on him. <laughs> <laughs> Slipped out of his pocket <laughs> while he was sleeping. Cause just compare compare the mutilator to Jason. It's like, the door is locked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He has like negative yeah. He has not. Not only does he not have supernatural powers, he has negative powers <laughs> under a normal person. But yeah. I, I was confused about a, a little bit about Blind Man's Bluff. I maybe Buddy Cooper and the Coopers as a family play this more than I do. But I, 
I was listening to the rules and I was kind of like, okay, it's not really hide and seek. They really got could, into it, yeah. Like, I couldn't really tell whose eyes was were closed where, or or sometimes if it was supposed to be more dark than it looked. I think it was supposed to be more dark than it looked. I think that was the okay. problem. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Because people are so. like feeling around the room and we're watching it like I can see everything and she's not blindfolded. Very clear. <laughs> All but right. I, I do like it, and it's kind of a cool idea to have a killer going around during a game yeah. like this. It's fun. It's fun, and for once, a movie is too bright. Usually, the problem is um, that movies are too dark, but in this case, it was too bright. But we'll let it go. No big deal. All right. So they're um, um, so they're yeah they're playing this game, blind man's bluff, which apparently is one person hides and everyone then comes into the house that's dark. And if you find the person, then you hide with them. Um, turns out the mutilator's in the house, though. Um, the people hiding see his legs, but they think it's Ed. But then Ed finds them, and the game's over. Uh, so that that's exciting. I got to tell you guys, you know, I love the mutilator and all, but I was really bored for long stretches. <laughs> well, mainly this part. But yes, long Mainly stretches this of this film. Like I was just bored out of my mind. Uh, none of them well, the, are the yeah, whole pool a... scene, and then this whole blind. It's like it's. Ex- I mean, at least eventually you got to the like murder in the at at the end of the pool scene. But like, I don't know. It was kind of weird because it's the. I think part of the issue with these scenes is like the the way that the tension builds isn't very like consistent so like you the the, you see the characters but like you know that this is it you know that there's the mutilator there but they have no idea like all of these deaths happen and they actually don't know that this is all happening Mm -hmm. until like the very end so so it's really bizarre because like usually in these like slasher films the 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 way the tension builds is because the characters keep discovering the bodies and they 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 know that someone's killing them and so then they start to freak out and you know like they're trying to survive but in this one the he, the mutilator kills them and he hides the bodies and they they don't know about it until the very end when Ed and Pam go into the garage and find them all yeah and to make yeah. matters worse to make matters That's worse fine. Like I'd be okay with that if we could also if if they made up for it with hijinks, you know, like fun um, back and forth. But they don't. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. they fill that void with bo- with boringness. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and also, I think they were trying to. I mean, they're trying to. They were Monopoly definitely trying to. The, yeah, but, like give us more character. I'm sorry, but Monopoly is the most boring game you could play. Like in real life the, like so watching <laughs> other people play it in a movie is not <laughs> gonna well, make anything interesting friday the friday 13th, 13th they play strip monopoly which uh mm. <laughs> which uh intensifies it all right <laughs> no one's worried about the missing couple uh the two remaining couples go to bed ed attempts to help his girl lose her purity what's her name again pam but she will not have it as um ralph and uh sue are getting intimate she suddenly remembers that he needs to lock up. Uh, and he says, what about Mike and Linda? And she says, well, then go find them. It just is this back and forth that just doesn't, just feels, it's it's like, it's not what any, the character would do. It's just we, the, the plot needs him to get out of the house. So they just create this situation. She promises she'll have something to show him when he gets back and then unbuttons her shirt a bit. Then, oh my God! Yes. Oh my God! Comedy gold. The movie literally speeds up like a 1920s silent picture to show how quickly Ralph will find them in order to get back to Sue. Complete with the saloon piano soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> They're using visuals and audio cues to just express his internal state there. Oh no, Tom. <laughs> Why? How? What what justify this scene, Tom? It's the I, I don't know if I have justification, but the the co-director in the interview said that when when Buddy suggested this, he said, "No, no, that's that's a terrible idea. It's not going <laughs> to work." And, but Buddy insisted. Uh... 
so I guess it was part of the part of his vision. But I mean, it does. If you're gonna if you're gonna have like the blind man's bluff and the monopoly, you're, you're gonna have this too. It, I think it's part of like the uh, almost childish vision of this world. <laughs> You know, it's it's a bizarre mix, like of, the, you know, the gruesome killings and stuff. But then you also have those light moments, and you also have, you know, the the couple that's like sleeping together in bed, like fully clothed. You know, it's it's very innocent in in its way. You know, it's it's a uh, but it's, it's a weird. Mix. It's a line. It's a line that you have to either establish that you're gonna cross throughout the movie or not at all. You know, you can't yeah. just it's slapstick you can't do that it once. It, it's actually, do that once. actually slapstick. With the other, I was just joking before. Yeah, it is. It, and it's jarring, too. I mean, I think even a teenager who rented this VHS back in the day, they kind of would have looked at each other and been like, huh? Right. Yeah. In a yeah, moment of a... dramatic <laughs> irony, she adds, the kitchen door is already locked, as if you didn't already know. Because she uh, still thinks it was uh, Ralph, not the mutilator, that locked. Uh, she locked out earlier. Oh, that just confused me. Oh, thank you, correctly. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, what's that? Uh, at first, I thought she was trying to do some kind of double entendre. The four of us together <laughs> anyway. can can barely piece together what you know all the little loose ends of this movie. It, it's good that we do this. We learn so much. All right, Ralph looks around outside for Mike and Linda. He finds Linda's underwear and laughs about it. Then he makes some noise, which awakens the mutilator, <laughs> who is asleep. He, he just <laughs> murdered two people, just like within an hour, and he just took a nap in this 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 room under you know by the garage. Oh, what a moment when the mutilator's asleep, Charlie. How how great is that? Oh, it is. It was one of the more memorable things from our first <laughs> viewing. He looks so not dangerous and he doesn't look particularly like worried about the situation <laughs> you're not used to seeing i mean in many slashers and horrors you're not even used to seeing the person's face yeah, yeah. let alone seeing him take a nap yeah <laughs> you know Between and murders. one really funny thing too is that this uh kind of like <laughs> secret room off the garage or his room or wherever he is it's it's not really that hidden when you watch i think you know when you really get into it and see people going in and out of it more it's more of just just like a side garage but yeah. um they didn't really have the location or the the budget to pull off like a sliding panel like a, you know usually it's like a secret bookshelf that opens or something yeah but um just the fact that he's sleeping well, i think you're getting too farly is awesome you, to see him just there yes. nodding off you you don't expect to see your killer doing that. Yeah, that, that's that's good stuff all right and so, we're tired of the movie at that time as well everyone's so. sleepy <laughs> Everybody's sleepy. Ralph considers nailing shut the door that he thinks Mike and Linda are behind, but um, because he is, after all, quite the prankster. But uh, then he thinks better of it, opens the door, and is killed by the mutilator. He gets a hook through the neck. Is that right? Pitchfork. Pitchfork. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, team. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Meanwhile, Ed's girlfriend hears something, but Ed sleeps through it. Um. Uh, Ralph's sorry I was I didn't get the girls names very well uh, Sue uh, goes out to look for him uh, Ed okay Pam gets up to check things out she bumps uh, she bumps into the prank the hanging dummy that was uh, set up earlier and that none of us uh, <laughs> understood until now <laughs> um, then she goes back and wakes Ed demanding that they go look for everybody he complains it's bad enough they're not sleeping together. Now they're not sleeping at all. Oh, come on, Ed. He was he was so understanding of her purity up until that part. Um, okay, they find Sue at the bottom of the stairs. She runs up to get dressed. Um, Pam is ready to leave now, but Sue insists they look for Ralph one last time. What a bad idea that was, huh, Tom? Mm. They could have just driven away. Okay. Uh, or stayed together to run no, around this is the, the house best. one yeah. more time. They negotiate yeah. who will go alone one way while the other goes, <laughs> while the other two go the other way. Uh, <laughs> as if the three of them just go around a, the house together. It's such a small yeah. property to search. <laughs> it's like a small room. condo, two room fishing condo. Like, how will we cover this ground? <laughs> Sue, Sue volunteers to go by herself, which is a bad choice. Mutilator's waiting there. Uh, he mutilates her. Uh, I don't. How does he kill her? 
hook. It was a hook it's the... through the the crotch. Yeah. Oh, jeez. It's, it's really particularly gruesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. gruesome. Okay. It's actually called a, it's called a gaff. Uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> well, it's, it's, yeah. It's just it goes. What makes it so gruesome is like most of the other deaths. You know, like they. It's like a head death, right? So yeah. you like the person dies kind of. But this one's gruesome because it's like she's alive. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. like it's really gross. It's gross. It's... And like horrifying. Amen. That, that's that was a big reason I think why they had trouble getting a rating. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's infamous. Yeah. That that one scene is infamous. Yeah. All right. Ed and Pam make it around the house and they find Sue dead in the garage. Then they find Ralph dead and then the other two. Oh no, the mutilator's coming. Uh, Ed hides and waits for the mutilator and hits him, I think. Uh, well, the, the, the no, kind of zany thing right before around. then what is, is he takes on? the girl, uh, his girlfriend, puts her in the closet, props the door. And says, "You stay here." Then he wants to like do battle with his dad, I guess, right? But he only lasts like five seconds because he's like knocked on the ground by the mutilator. So then Pam comes out to intervene. Uh, it's real dark. The version I was watching, I don't know what was happen- happening, but the mutilator gets up and approaches Pam. She stabs him in the heart. Does that happen? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. first, she throws a uh, pyramid sinker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Into his head, like near his temple. Does yep. it? Does it have? Does it get into his head? I think yeah. it does. Yes. It How, oh come there. on, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and she threw it. She threw it from with her right hand, and it went into his his right side, which is like impossible. Good <laughs> call. That's right. That's exactly right. Ed still. Yeah. Ed still and he alive. He just pulled it out. He's like ah. <laughs> Ed's still alive, but he has a bear trap on his leg or something. What does he have on no, his leg? No, he got stabbed by the battle axe. In the yeah, leg. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in this movie. Sons of Blood came out, though. Harley, did you watch this movie? <laughs> yes, and the whole time I was just like, oh, make this end. I can't. I'm so bored. Pam helps him out of it, and they go to the car, but alas... The engine's not working. She floods the, the, the engine, pumping the gas too much. They need to wait a minute. Mutilator can be seen getting up in the distance. Oh, no, and Charlie. And then Ed takes a moment after yelling at her for flooding it, where it's a very film or acting school kind of moment, where he's like, all right, I'm sorry I yelled. <laughs> well, just wait a second. It got flooded. <laughs> you know, and then, and then she's like, okay, let's do this belt thing and try to stop the bleeding. I love it. it it's at the... This dramatic moment where she shouldn't really be offended by his yelling, you know, and he you see his actor wheels turning saying, I should, like, take a breath here. <laughs> OK, so then they finally notice the mutilator isn't where he was. Um, and the car still won't start and the mutilators climbing on top of the car, swinging his axe through the roof. They burn his hand with a uh, cigarette lighter and then the car starts. They drive off. The mutilator falls. Cops arrive. She drives in reverse with a mutilator in the back of the car, crushing him against some cinder blocks in half. I mean, a clean oh, tear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, That's gory and well executed. Yeah. Ed, well done. Well done. Only now does Ed realize it's his dad at this point. Um, yep. The cops tell him to pull forward. They do. The mutilator is there. In, you know, His legs are there and his torsos in the other half. He has uh, enough energy, it turns out, to swing at the cop a few times and make like some severe damage, right, before he dies. I think he, she cops cuts off the, the like cop's foot. Wow. Yeah. Way, to, way to go. Now we're in the hospital where Pam and Ed sit together looking out the window. And <laughs> <laughs> closing credits feature <laughs> fall break. Instant sitcom <laughs> ending comedy hilarity song with bloopers. Yeah. After staring out a window, knowing that their lives will never be the same again, <laughs> pondering all the lost friends and the fact that his dad tried to kill him, <laughs> cut to fall break bloopers. Going on a <laughs> fall break, yeah. Uh, it, it does really pick you up after you get you're getting a little sleepy in the end there. Look, yeah. um, I want someone else to review it first. Uh, how about how about Tom Scalzo, who has just been living in the world of this movie all day, Tom? I yeah I have I I got the the Blu-ray I watched all the features and read the booklet uh, you know it gives you 
I guess I guess it just gives you a, an appreciation for a low budget small town movie, which we all appreciate generally. You know, it's a it's kind of a family affair. Uh, pretty much this whole town was involved in in some way in creating it. They said like the whole cast and crew stayed at at Buddy Cooper's dad's motel across the street from the condo, and they all were like living together for a month. And, you know, they started off with like $86,000 or something and, you know, tried to make a movie with it and ended up getting like all these people. They actually, the effects guy is a guy from Evil Dead 2 and they did a bunch of other stuff and like they got some people from New York. And and once you start like just seeing that, like I appreciate that and I appreciate everything that went into it. And I think it's a little silly sometimes and like it's uneven and there's parts that are definitely slow, but on the whole, like. I love the the ambition, and I think it's it came together pretty well for kind of what they had to work with. Um, so that like I still enjoy it. I think it's fun, uh, start to finish, really. And I would still recommend it to people as a good example, you know, of of this kind of movie. Charlie, yeah, this is the these are the golden slashers that you want to see. There's not that many of them either, you know, that yeah. are uh, so you you gotta love it. Um, they were able to do so much with 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 you know good amount of money but not not so much as the big budget guys um i love the idea of like a town coming together to make a movie called or that be, would become a mutilator that's pretty awesome and i'm sure they had such a fun time filming it um so much energy and just can do spirit it's very cool um it's like a little bit of americana and i, I would recommend it to to people as as one of the slashers you kind of have to have under your belt, you know. And uh, the the song is unbelievable. The song the song is just yeah. it, I don't know. It, it transcends, you know, just a film song, and it's a uh, joy. Ava, your review. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think I've always had a lot of fondness for this movie. I mean, I, like, like again, I think this is like maybe the fourth or fifth time I've seen it. Um, impressive <laughs> just <laughs> something um but the i think what struck me this time was um i you know i i have always enjoyed this movie but this is the first time i have like i actually set, like really paid attention to what was happening and then i realized this is not a movie you want to start pulling the threads to because because it it's it does, does not the, the story does not hold up so you have to really like sort of just enjoy it for like the sort of atmosphere and like, you know, what they're trying to do. And you'd like have to just focus on the kills. I mean, I think that the suspense problem is a real problem in the story, but like the actual like and I think that it's kind of a disservice because I think actually a lot of the kills in this movie are quite creative and good. But. Mm-hmm. You like it all happens. They happen so fast. They're so um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's it, it's like it kind of just happens, and then the movie just keeps moving. It moves on to this like inane scene about them like I don't know playing a game or yeah. just drinking or going to bed. You know, so like there's not enough like have to give in to the scenes, which it's like a shame because I think that mm-hmm. that they had some really good. You know, like what. I, one of the things I think this movie is missing is the um, the sort of body placement, like for people to discover, like even the the last movie that we watched, uh, D- the Dorm That Drip Blood, which I mean, even that movie had some really good body placement scenes, you know, or you know, like obviously the I think the key the 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 the, the one to look up to it for body placement is obviously Halloween. Um, yeah, and and those are sort of like with Michael Myers, what, what he does with with yeah. his dead he's bodies. Pretty creative. He's very creative, but um, but like the, he had like uh, you know like when he shoves that pitchfork up and like hangs him from you know like yeah, but it that uh, there's only one you know like it's such a short scene. It, well, it's it, at the end, like yeah, Ed sees everyone like lined up, but it's and that's like the the poster, of, like everybody lined up, but you only right. see that for like a brief second that's right and i just feel like there's so many i it's like kind of a shame because i think there's all these great elements in this movie and like the in some respects like it just it 
it doesn't mean it's full potential because they shortchange themselves on some yeah. of these story elements. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it's just one I've always enjoyed watching. I think the song has a lot of it's like, you know, I don't know. It's just like it's this. It helps. It, it helps. I think it just brings me back to like my childhood because those are like the songs of the 80s, you know, like those sitcom like things that we grew up watching on reruns all yeah. the time. So like, you know, I just have a lot of like sentimentality towards this movie, um, even though I think that the, there, you know, like if I sit down and actually analyze it, I can like start picking it apart. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's got it's got. Some, I mean, obviously, fall break. We can't say enough good things about how good Fall Break is. Um, you know, the fact that the mutilator is sleeping at, a couple times throughout the movie. Really <laughs> good. Really good bonus moment there. Um, the saloon piano scene is such a bad idea that that I it, it is beyond bad idea. And I'm, I'm almost glad that it, it got through, you know? Um, I just... But... Other than that, I just wish, you know, I wish there was, I wish they had gone one way or the other, like, you know, like Ava said, it's like either go all suspense or go all hijinks where they just kind of go this middle ground, uh, with, um, you know, kind of boring suspense and kind of boring hijinks. I, I don't really like these characters too much. So, uh, you know, it, Aww. but it's big picture. It's fun to think about that. The dad, like <laughs> this is the dad's evil plan. Like, you know, like, what? This is the dumbest, dumbest plan ever. We don't need the prologue, which is unpleasant to watch. And like, at no point is the dad like, "You killed my wife," or you know, nothing. You know, nothing. Tom, what yeah. are you thinking? Yeah, just what just what you said. It was in one of the interviews with the the guy who actually got credited with co-director, John Douglas. He he said he said that he's like, if you really started to look at it, like, why why now? Why <laughs> He's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, but by then you've already bought your ticket, so. Uh, yeah, I, I'm usually not impressed by gore or whatever, but um, I'll give them some some total credit. You know, when the, when the body, you know, the legs and the body are separated from each other, that's some that's impressive. You know, and, and, uh, and kind of and fun. total credit for atmosphere too, because yeah. when you're thinking like, oh, I want to watch that condo by the beach slasher you know there's there's a lot of camp slasher movies and there could be some that are set in maybe like new york 1980s or something this is like yeah. you know it's got its own feel because of the the being on the water the beach house and then the fact that there are fishing implements used which tom i didn't pick up on totally until you pointed it out that everything is fishing kills <laughs> Um, but you know, that's, that's another unique element. And no so, apparent cool. reasons. Like you, you shot my wife, therefore I will kill all your friends <laughs> in a <laughs> maritime fashion. <Yeah. laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and so, um, um, it's an 80, it's you know, prime eighties, uh, time. It's it, it definitely not the glossy late eighties. So that it, it's good for that reason. And then, um, you know, shock memories. I guess the song, the song is what's always stood out for all of us, and just the concept of a fall break. You know, and it, it's unheard of anywhere yeah. other than the small area where this movie was made. And I'm glad that they're <laughs> able to to put it in. You know, to get it out there into the world for all of us to find out about it, Charlie. So yeah, of course, uh, for Shock July, the winner of best song uh, was yeah. Fall Break. Good, but. Uh, other category was nominated in best villain. The mutilator was nominated. Probably just along for his name. He was nominated <laughs> along with the secretary from Eyeball, evil birthday girl from Happy Birthday to Me, oh, wow. Billy Eye slash John Eye, Rocktober Blood, which oh. may be a spoiler. <laughs> this is tough. Um, and Evil from New Year's oh, Evil. Evil's got to win that one, right? And Evil from New Year's Evil yeah. won it, based yeah. on charisma alone. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's no, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's uh, you know, it's it, it's okay, but um, it, you know, it's a notch, it's a notch below, like you know, uh, Screaming Dead. When you think of how people should talk to each other throughout a movie, I want them talking like Screaming Dead, more oh, than yeah. than the way they're talking in this one. But uh, I mean, you you know. That's lightning in a bottle, I guess. Yeah. Um, any other uh, any other thoughts, or you guys feel good? 
Uh, just a, uh, just another note on the DVD or the Blu-ray. It actually the credits says Fall Break instead of Mutilator, which was kind of fun. Nice. Uh, nice. When it yeah. started. Yeah, it's that's a, the Amazon the, Prime version too. It says burned in. Wow. Let's Beautiful. listen. Let's listen to a little more of this song. Leaves of summer turn to red and gold, and the football game. Okay, I should note this is the closing credits I'm looking at. So while this song is playing, they're showing like clips of the best moments of the movie with like the name of the actor underneath it, like they do a lot in in, in credits. They're showing the kid getting strangled by his dad. Like, they're replaying that little scene to say that Trace Cooper played the kid or whatever. Oh, my God. Over fall break. Isn't that... Uh, I don't know what to say. Here we go. The hint of the cold time to get Oh, but then they show him laughing. It, it's an outtake, so I guess that makes yeah. it a little more lighthearted. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the guard with escape in mind. Forgetting about classes, leaving books behind. Time to get away. Empty cottage sitting on the shore. Tourists all left about a month before, and we're gonna have a good time. Gonna have a good time. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time. We're going on up. A ball break, a ball break. walking hand in hand in the moonlight. We'll be the sweet soul I swear. Gotta love that blue eyed soul. That's blue eyed soul, right, Charlie? Oh yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. <laughs> hey Farley, are we gonna men are we gonna mention the Freaky Farley cover contest? Cover a scene contest today? Yeah. Alright. Um so uh that's our review. Look, uh two things. One, we're doing a Freaky Farley cover scene contest. Uh Tom and Ava, listen to this. This is exciting. Um if you, anyone listening there wants to film their own version of any, any or all scenes in Freaky <laughs> Farley, um, we will watch it and um, award the best one with a, um, a prize. We're not going to tell you what that prize is, but it's not necessarily worth all the work, but it's going to be a good time. <laughs> Get yourself into the Halloween mood. I mean, this is, you got you to gotta live at large uh, in October and... Uh, do some Halloween stuff, and this could be Great one thing idea. you could do with your friends. I mean, uh, super fun. Yeah, and what's the deadline? Like, um, like October like twenty seventh or something, so we can announce it on Halloween, right? Yeah, yeah. So do that, and also, um, folks, Slingshot Cops is on Amazon Prime. Just watch it. Look, we provide you this amazing podcast every month. We have a lot to do. We're busy people. Um, all you have to do to pay us back is to rent purchase or just stream for free uh slingshot cops on amazon prime and force everyone you know to do it is that too much to ask tom not at all not at all all right feeling good guys Woohoo! yeah yeah that was awesome all right uh we'll see you next month where if if i get my way maybe we'll watch a romantic comedy that is has no horror (laughs) elements whatsoever stay tuned for that